Ian McKelvey. Mr Speaker, thank you for the opportunity to speak on uh, this bill. And before I uh, start, I want to congratulate the member, uh, Catherine Delahunty, on uh, getting a dr bill drawn out of the ballot. Um, uh, some of us will probably live in this place for years and never get a bill drawn out of the ballot. And I'm starting to think like that myself. I also want to say, uh, before I start on what I'm going to talk about, that I do have some sympathy for the origins of this bill. Uh, I'm not going to support it, however, and I'll give the reasons for that as well. But if you think about the history of New Zealand, and, and uh, there's been a lot of talk about where people come from today and where they live and whatever else. My family come from the Rangitiki. We've been there since 1850. In that time, we've been subject to the Public Works Act. Uh, we've also been subject to uh, the Discharge Soldiers Settlement Act, 1915. The Discharge Soldiers Settlement Act, 1943. So I can have some sympathy for the grievances that, that number, a number of the previous speakers have talked about. However, that's no reason for us in an, in an age where, um, imagine the government now passing a law which confiscated a whole lot of land off people compulsorily and giving it to someone else, which is effectively what those three acts I'm talking about did and enabled. Uh, those days are long gone, and I think Nook Karako and his um, speech to the House talked about the fact that, that the world is so different now. We have made a lot of uh, attempts in this um, parliament to, to uh, rectify the wrongs of the past. We will never entirely get to that point, but uh, Minister Finlayson, with his work and, and many other of our, um, our ministers, both in this government and previous governments, have made significant attempts to change and, and rectify, I guess, things that have happened in the past that that perhaps shouldn't have happened. Uh, so I think there have been many uh, gross injustices of the past. Some of them are brought, some of them brought about by the Public Works Act, many by other means. And as I said, the country's changed significantly in that time. And, and, and I think we're in a pretty good space now with respect to how we acquire land. Mr Speaker, local government, uh, and I was involved in local government for quite some time before coming here, has to get its planning right. It has to enable uh, public infrastructure to be built. So does central government. And the only way we can effectively enable uh, infrastructure to be built for the future and for future generations of New Zealanders is to plan it well and make sure that it's put in place in a manner that, uh, I guess, does the best for our communities. Sometimes, uh, and in fact very seldom, because I understand this Act's only been utilised once in the last 10 years, uh, uh, where it's had to be enacted. Um, obviously, the threat of it's there. But sometimes uh, it's necessary to acquire land that people don't want to give up uh, to enable infrastructure to be built. And so it's, it's essential that the government has the ability to acquire land from whoever uh, to enable the, the uh, creation of infrastructure for future generations. That's what this Act was uh, put in place for in, in 1908 when it was first uh, um, put in place in New Zealand, it, it might not have always been used in the manner that we now would intend to use it. But nonetheless, it's important that we have that ability to use it. Uh, it's it's a hugely important that we protect the rights of those people whose land is acquired as well. And I think that we have the facility in place now to do that. Uh, Catherine Delahunty in her address said that uh, there's no more divided rule. I consider that this bill effectively is creating a divided rule, and I think that would be very unfortunate for us to, to go down that track uh, now, having, having gone through such a lot of pain in the last, uh, certainly the last 20 odd years, trying to rectify a lot of the stuff that effectively divided rule caused. Uh, also in the preamble to this bill, it says the Crown has the responsibility to protect Maori land for future generations. The Crown has the responsibility to protect all land for future generations. We have a responsibility to protect the rights and opportunity for all New Zealanders. And we also have a responsibility to ensure those people who are privileged enough to own land manage that land in a manner that future generations will be able to utilise and, and enjoy. So, Mr Speaker, I can't, I can't um, support this bill. I can understand the sentiment behind it, but, but I don't think it, uh, it should go any further. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Sure.